This video is a preface to the trio Patchy the Autobot. It is designed to give you tips about how to read and interpret the score. First, a note about the creation of this piece. Patchy the Autobot is a script written in Python that automates certain common tasks in the development of GNU Lillipond, a music typesetter. These tasks include compiling tests to make sure that developer's code does not negatively impact the visual output of scores. It also prevents changes that would force the program to crash. One day, when working on Patchy, I accidentally hit a key that has since disappeared from my computer. This key caused the Python script to open up and show me what Patchy was doing on the inside with the music he was checking. Finding Patchy's behavior intriguing, I decided to record the image on the screen and present it as a piece of music. This fortuitous event could have happened to anyone, and thus my suggestions are no more or less valid than yours. I offer them in hopes that they help you put together an interesting interpretation of the piece. Patchy the Autobot is a trio for three instruments. Each instrument has its own staff. The top staff should be played by violin. The middle staff can be played by any high wind instrument. The low staff should be played by cello or bass. The staves are read from left to right just like you would read a normal staff, taking the repeat ad infinitum. Thus, there is quite a bit of visual information in Patchy the Autobot that will disappear before you get the chance to play it. This is okay, and don't try to play everything. Just read from left to right, always taking the repeat. This has some interesting consequences on your playing. For example, take the stream of dynamics, which is now read in the score on your screen. The stream moves from right to left for the upper staff, left to right for the middle, and right to left for the lowest. This means that the upper and lower staves are reading in the opposite direction of the dynamics flow, which means that, for them, the dynamics go by twice as fast as if the dynamics were stationary, except, of course, at the repeats. On the other hand, the middle staff reads in the same direction as the dynamics are flowing. This means that the dynamics will change slowly, if at all. There are six notes and four accidentals in Patchy the Autobot, all of which are now red. The notes are moved around by a fermata named, you guessed it, Patchy the Autobot. Yes, empirical tests have led me to believe that this is Patchy incarnate in musical form. He is a joyous, if not simple, Autobot that moves notes where they need to go. He is accompanied by the square Pachetta, a stern and severe yet lovable Autobot that moves accidentals around. If you are playing a note or accidental and Patchy or Pachetta take it away from you, you must stop playing the accidental or note. The normal fermata indicates durations that are slightly longer than the written ones, whereas the square fermata indicates very long durations. Do not hesitate to be very expressive during these sustained passages and to experiment with various techniques that can be applied to sustained notes, such as alternate fingerings, varying pressure into the instrument, etc. The beams and beam stems in Patchy the Autobot, which are currently read, indicate approximate rhythm and pitch. The spacing between the notes as well as the number of beam segments show the rhythm, and the terminus of the stem show the pitch. Beams should be played ephemerally. Do not hesitate to experiment with spiccati, colleni, and other effects that counterbalance the sustain notes. As the prolation of beams changes often, do not take their horizontal spacing as a hard and fast indication of how the rhythm is to be played. Additionally, you can take the space between the beams at a tempo that suits the flow of the piece at that moment. In the middle ground between sustained and short notes, there are two sorts of events, both of which happen only in the cello. The first, which you see now on your screen in red, is the crawling bass clef. Whenever the clef is crawling, it should be interpreted as a medium paced glissando upwards and downwards. Otherwise, it should be interpreted as a plain old bass clef. Any time that there are beams and sustained notes occurring at the same time, they should be played as double stops. Patchy includes several expressive marks. You currently can see two of them in red, molto vibrato and leggero. Note that these expressive marks only have meaning if you encounter them in your normal reading from left to right. If they arrive and depart before you get to that point in the score, it's as if they were never there. Expressive marks are considered to be valid until the next one arrives, which can either cancel out or accompany the previous one. For the trill currently inching its way along the top of the page, it only applies to the violin notes falling under its extender at a given moment. Don't hesitate to make the trill quite fast. The tasks that Patchy the Autobot handles in Lillipond development range anywhere from scores that have several instruments and several measures to tiny musical examples that just contain several notes. You'll see that the latter is currently the case in Patchy the Autobot. There aren't as many dynamics as there were in the beginning, and in general, the activity on the screen has slowed down. However, you'll see that the middle and the top staff begin to have more beams. To me, this is an invitation from Patchy to experiment with interesting trades between the two instruments and forms of imitation and canon. 
That said, I, like you, am just an observer of the results of Patchy the Autobot, and thus you can take this information and do with it as you see fit. If you take a look at the bottom of your screen, you'll see that a small army of stems is slowly but surely beginning to invade the bottom system. These single stems are to be played at the duration indicated by the flag and the approximate pitch indicated by the end of the stem. The task at hand for the cellist is kind of like batting practice with a mechanical arm on robot steroids, so make sure to get as many stems as you can. This audio preface contains two interpretations from me of certain parts of Patchy the Autobot. Now I would like to interpret a brief excerpt from the second staff. Towards the end of the work, the clarinet needs to interpret a pas de deux between the DS Alcoda and the Senyo. This poses interesting temporal challenges as every time the player's eye hits the DS Al Senyo, the player must go to the Senyo. Thus, the reading of the score will invariably jump all over the place depending on when these signs arrive. Towards the end of the pas de deux, you'll see that a coda creeps in on the right side of the screen. By definition, as the DSL coda falls after the senyo but before the coda, you will always go back to the senyo and never to the coda. I have searched for this coda for days now and cannot find it, so I am confident that Patchy is saving it for the sequel. Now I'd like to talk a little bit about silence in Patchy the Autobot. As stated before, the blank spaces between beams can be interpreted at a tempo that fits with the performer. However, one question that must be resolved in the interpretation of Patchy the Autobot is the question of passages that have no dynamics attached to them. In the beginning of Patchy the Autobot, the dynamic stream begins with the upper staff, and the lowest staff doesn't receive dynamics until around 40 seconds into the piece. Inversely, towards the end of the piece, the upper staff won't have any dynamics before the piece ends, whereas the lower staff will have dynamics right about till the very end. It's up to the performers to decide if these passages are playable or not. If not, that means that certain instruments will have solos, which is not at all a bad idea, and in fact, is probably welcomed by Patchy the Autobot who seems like a rather solitary, yet simple and loving individual. However, if for you the absence of dynamics does not indicate not playing, then all I ask in the name of Patchy is that you try to play these passages dynamiclessly. I would now like to interpret for you the top or violin line of Patchy the Autobot. You will see that the Volta repeat dots at the end of the system are now red. Watch what happens to them as the work comes to a close. As if attracted by a strange magnetism, they fly off. This means that the Volta repeat becomes a final bar line, and when you reach this bar line, you're at the end of the piece. <laughs>